What's up, everybody? Elizabeth here from Bloom Creative Company, a Squarespace design agency. And the number one thing that new clients, when they work with us, are asking for is conversion or converting their leads from a potential customer to a sale, to make more money, to close more leads, to get more customers. However you put it, they are asking to convert more leads. And they are always at the end. We make these beautiful websites that are strategic and ready to work hard. And they look at me and they ask, well, what can I do next? And I tell them that there is one simple thing that you can be doing in order to get clients to trust you, to learn about your product, believe in your product or service. And it is so simple. It is an email. And in today's walkthrough, I want to show you how to use Squarespace email campaigns because how I would describe their internal platform, which launched, I think it was earlier this year, or late last year. It is an awesome system. They've made a ton of improvements and uh, there's just a lot of features on there that are very comparable now to companies like MailChimp and things like that, like easy email builders. And what's great about it is it's built into your website and you can manage your email campaigns within your Squarespace website. So I want to walk through how to set that up, how to set up a list, because if you didn't catch the, the video of the lead magnet setup, the super easy lead mag magnet setup that we did a couple weeks ago, go check that out. The link will be below. We'll teach you how to set up a lead magnet and a list. And that way you can use this email setup to reach your people because we need to talk to our people in order for them to trust us. We need to tell them about our products. We need to offer value so that they, they see the expertise and the knowledge that we have. We just have to communicate frequently and be top of mind. So follow me over to this screen share. We're going to walk through really quickly and really basically how to set up an email template, whether it's a welcome message or a blast or a timed email that someone will receive and it will look beautiful and it will look customized to your site. Let's go jump in. All right, guys. So we're going to jump right in into just leveraging the awesome system of Squarespace campaigns. So when you log into your site, you're going to go over here into marketing. Right up at the top is email campaigns. So you'll have a little reminder down here for how many emails that you've sent. It'll charge you I think you get three a month for a certain amount up to sending a certain a certain amount of um, people to your list. So it'll show you right here. You can upgrade or um, obviously we're in trial right now, but you can upgrade it whenever you're ready. So you can play around with it, get comfortable, make sure it's something that you want to do. But I liken these to Apple emails. I just think they're so beautiful to open and get people's attention. Obviously, you have to have a really strong subject to get someone to open it. But once they start reading it, they're just really beautiful. And they're super functional too. And we'll go through a bunch of those functions here. So let's create one. So you have two types that you can start with. And even if you start it as a blast, you can still make it an automation. It does, I'll show you how to change between the two. But if we wanted to do a welcome email to welcome subscribers, we'd click here. And then you have three more options. Say thanks with a coupon if you've got an e-commerce shop, one month check-in, welcome new subscribers, and then more e-commerce. So you can thank someone for purchasing, reward a big purchase with a coupon, or upsell. So we're going to just welcome our new subscribers here. And then we're just going to go through, kind of change up how everything looks. So just like you're in your normal site, a blue box will appear on everything that you can edit. And that pencil will pop up to edit even further. So let's just take it from the top. So I'm going to click up here. Right now it's under an image. So I can delete this and add a new image. I can use my logo that's preloaded from my site. Or I can use text. I'm going to keep it on my logo. So if we go down here, it's just all the different things that we can vary. So when you're clicking through different content sections of the site, anywhere, even to clicking on what seems like nothing over here, it's going to show you what you can edit. So we're back up here, title. So if you want to keep this title text here, you could make it bigger, you can change the color, you can go with their theme color, or you can choose not to show it. Now, I let's say I want to make this background white and not gray, make my logo pop a little bit more. You would go down here to section color. I could change it to white. And this is where I can change the layout where I want my logo to go, left or right. 
maybe we make it on the left and then your font pack. So this will change the font throughout your entire email, but this is where you can kind of customize more to the font that's on your site. So for our test site that we've been working on here, I would pick something like Modern Sans, just that clean kind of bold look that is throughout the test site that I've been working on through all these tutorial videos. Now padding is how much space you want at the top or the bottom. So if you're trying to condense and you have something really important you want someone to see down here above the fold, you could make a, a lot less padding just if there was something you want to entice people to see. And then left and right padding. And that's pretty much it for this section here. So in here, maybe we don't want a picture. Maybe we just don't like this one altogether. We just want to go straight to the welcome. I'm going to hit delete. And if you notice, there is the same plus sign that pops up on your site if you're in 7.1. And you can add these kind of contents. So maybe it's text, welcome message. Now the best way to talk to people is just talk to them like they're your friend. Don't make it super over wordy or too technical. Just write like, write like it's a friend because that's how people are going to respond best to your emails. Now this here is linked to a blog. So I'm going to click this pencil. Oh, it's not letting me edit. Let's delete and start over. Here's some text. Here is a spacer. Maybe we want to add uh, an image. So you would upload an image here and that would populate. And then we can do a button. And then you would just click right in here. Shop now, maybe it's an offer. So again, here's where we're going to link it. So as you know, in your site, if you have a button, you have to link it to somewhere. So you can link it out to a web page. You can link it to any page in your site. You can link it to an email or a phone. So maybe this is our test site shop. This is our, I'm sorry, this is your page. I thought it was weird that it wasn't populating. Usually these two are flipped when you're editing your site. So web address is linked out to any web address, LinkedIn, Facebook, anything like that. Page, this is where we want to go. So if we ever shop here, we just click it, link it. I knew there was an easier way to do that. That was, um, that messed me up. So here we have our style. You could change it to outline or rounded. Padding again, alignment, center. Maybe we want it off to the right. Your padding. Let's put it back in the center because we want this to look good. I don't want to just throw a bunch of random things on here for you just to show you what it looks like. I want it to actually look nice. So we'll pick that gr that green we've been using uh, and we'll make sure it's there's that and then we'll make sure the text reflects it. Shop now. Section color. So this is that background color right now. It's it's white, but you can make it transparent to the background of here. I don't know why it's not letting me, but usually you can make it transparent to reflect what's back here. I know you can do it on a spacer. So if we went here, section color, maybe not. I used to. All right, we're just going to keep going back. So maybe we want to break up these sections. We'll, we'll make that one gray to kind of break it up. Maybe we put another one in here. Now those spaces are differently. So if you're here, all you have to do is change that height. If we go down here, maybe we want to link the blog or a certain product. So you would click blog and it's going to show up blank. So you'd have to add a blog post. So you click this here. We use this one, this one. Maybe we want to feature our top three blog posts. Now it's going to populate, which looks awesome but you can go in here and change the type of data that's shown. So if you don't want the image, you can take it out. If you don't want the date, the excerpt, just the title, you can put the author on there. Really up to you how you want to show it and how, how it looks best all together. And then you can change your, your buttons again to reflect, you know, the other buttons that you made up here. You can make it text only even. However, I mean, the sky's the limit to how, how you want to, you know, just make your, 
your emails look custom because what I like to do is make them look very on brand. So I'll use the same colors that I use in my site. I'll make sure it shows the images that I use from blog articles on my site or the Bloom site, just to make sure every, that there's consistency and there's brand recognition. So when this comes in your inbox, someone will see it and it'll look similar to everything that you do because you don't wanna just throw out a bunch of random looking emails. You wanna keep it very consistent. So that's that section. There is also a line that you can use to break it up. And last one is a product. So you would add product here. Maybe we do two. And there it is. And then again, you can change all those details. So if that description seems really long, you don't want to have the price, maybe description and title. You can show the add to cart button. Again, you can just change it all up to keep consistency there. Now, after you have your email built out, maybe, you know, you've, you've played around, you have the look that you want. There are a couple extra steps that you need to take. So the first one is you have to go over here to email. Now automation is because we picked an automated welcome. So you would have to select your timing and your mailing list. So right now I have a default and opt-in lead magnet. So let's say this is a welcome email that we had for a lead magnet. You would click this here and then you would pick the timing. So maybe you want a day later immediately. So if you were to build out a welcome sequence, you could essentially build out an email for every single day and pick, you can pick custom and what kind of delay. So you could have it for five days in a row, seven days in a row, whatever that, whatever you want that to be for you. So when we go, over here, you're gonna to have to add your subject, preview text, and then you have to add a sender profile. So you'll create it here and you'll put the name and the sender email and it's gonna send you a code that you will have to confirm it and plug in the code here. And then you're almost there. You have one more step to do before you can actually send them out and that's your legal address. So I highly recommend you do not put your home address here, get a PO box, something that reflects your business because it will show up down here, but you have to have a legal address and you have to have a sender profile before you send out any emails or it'll keep giving you an error saying you must do this. So a good best practice after you set these up and you have a killer subject, awesome hook in your email preview, send a test, send it to someone else. I can't tell you how embarrassed I've been when I send out an email and I don't have someone on the team look at it and there's a typo and it's just not a good reflection of the company that we've created. So always send a test. That's my word of advice. Um, up here too, um, you can change between after a person subscribes or after a purchase. I wanted to just hit on that really quick because when you go back here and you set, if you create just a blast, not an automation like we just did, you can pick from all of these different templates, which is awesome. What I would do is I would pick one that looks close to what I'm trying to do and then just change all the colors and maybe the font and kind of make it look more like my site. So if I liked this one, I would click it, use this layout. And then I would just do all the styling changes just like I did on the last one. I would delete things, I would add things, make sure they look good. And then here under email, it's going to be um, you, same thing, subject, preview text, mailing list, sender profile, legal address, and then you can schedule when you'd like it to go out. So if you don't want it to be immediately, you can schedule it in advance at a specific time. So this is a good way that you can batch all your emails in the beginning of the month. So you're not going in there once a week. You just set a day. This will save you a ton of time. Pick out which day you want it to go and the time. And that's how you can schedule those emails out. And then you would click schedule campaign. I wanna show you one more thing in here, and that's this kind of homepage. It will give you, once you send out a campaign, it will have your, it's called insights of the campaign. How many people opened, how many people deleted, what links people clicked on. You can get a lot of good data on how your, your emails are performing. Now I notice every time that I send one out, my opt-in rate is always, or my open rate, excuse me, is always 60 to 7%. Industry standard is like 10 to 20. So there's just something about the way these emails look or maybe I just have a really killer list that is super interested in, in what I'm trying to do. But um, you'll look here for the insights 
And then you can always look through your automations, your sent emails, any that are scheduled. Here's your list. So if you have different types of opt-ins or newsletters, you can always add a list that goes to different ones or um, purchase list versus list of opt-ins and people you're trying to grow their trust. You can create, you know, different strategies based on the type of list that you want to do. Um, and then just the last piece here is best practice for me is anytime you sent or scheduled or automated, what I'll do is I'll go in my sent emails and there will be a button, a way to duplicate it. Let's see if it's here on this radio. You can either edit or you can just duplicate. So to save yourself a ton of time, I would make one template that I just duplicate for each newsletter that I hit and pop in the new information. So that is one of the best practices I have. I might tweak images and put shift things around a little bit, but total time saver, create a template that reflects your brand, has all your branding information in there, and then just duplicate it from there. And that is about it for, for the walkthrough here. Just remember, you want to keep a good look and intel on your campaign insights that will appear here because it's a great first step to be emailing people and building your list and communicating, but you also want to make sure what you're doing is effective as well. I hope you got a ton of value in that video and saw how easy it is to craft beautiful looking emails that pe your people will just want to open and read through. Now stay tuned for the next walkthrough that will be dropping next and it will be taking that knowledge that we just took and building on that. So we know how to make an email, but I want to show you how to create an opt-in, a newsletter opt-in. So that way you can start regularly emailing your list and start growing that trust and growing that know and that knowledge in you. So you can start converting those leads and ultimately make you more money. So stay tuned, hit subscribe, smash the like button. So I know that you enjoyed this and I know that you're getting value out of this and we'll keep the videos coming for you and stay tuned for the next one. I'm Elizabeth Muller from Bloom Creative Company, a Squarespace design agency, and we'll see you on the next one.